Genesis 50. Have a look at verses 22 to 26. It's like uh, Joseph's funeral address. Down comes the coffin lid and the life is over. And if you're at the funeral, they might tell the story of uh, your life, right? Might talk about you. But the real point about your life is not uh, the things that you did, the events. It's the inner life. It's the governing principle behind your life. What made you, you? What made Joseph, Joseph? And uh, we have a whole library full of like famous last words and things like that. And last minute surprises, you know, you get things like uh, the, somebody who's been a vicious criminal uh, turning to Christ or something at the end of his life and repenting. And you get something like somebody who is a, uh, known as a kind of society saint, all of a sudden a scandal comes out at their uh, funeral. And you think, oh, I never thought he was like that. So what's the point of my life? Somebody asked me that. Uh, I was visiting this old lady in an old people's home and they said, what's the point? of my life? Well, it's a good question, isn't it? What's the point of Joseph's life? What will they say when I'm dead? What will my obituary read like? <laughs> what will they say at the funeral about the governing principle of my life? I think that's a good question. So what about Joseph? Here's his deathbed scene. And the Egyptian verdict is quite interesting. They honour him as a prince. They embalm him. And Joseph has gone to Egypt as you know, some years before, he's gone as a slave. He's gone as a, uh, the lowest rung of society. He's uh, lived there in obscurity. He's been exposed to false accusation. And slowly, because of his integrity and goodness, he has risen up and up until his present position of power and celebrity. And when he's embalmed after his death, it's in the manner of a pharaoh. He is big. He is huge in Egyptian society. So let's do a funeral speech for Joseph, shall we? Because every life's got this thing. It's got the outward things that you do. When I was six, I got measles. And the inner things that you are. I want to go for the inner things. But the outward things in Joseph's life were checkered with misfortune. It was... He was, it was like he was born to trouble. He was ripped from the safety of his home. He was sold into slavery, cast into prison, marked with grief. Don't you just get that? Some people just seem to have a really naff time of life on the outside. This is life. Part of life is misery. Heck, <laughs> you didn't think it was otherwise, did you? Why do some people seem to get it so tough? It's just... Plain daft to call it punishment for sin, or even correction for a fault. It just seems to go that way, doesn't it? His integrity, you might say, was what got him into trouble. <laughs> he was receiving from God, and he told his family, he was a bit childish about it, but he was just receiving from God and sharing with his family, and that got him into trouble with his brothers. He refused to sleep with a woman, and that got him into trouble in part of his house, and so he go, ends up in prison. He stays there for years. Imagine. You know, we seem to strive for the removal of misfortune in our life, the removal of pain, but we don't really understand what God does with our lives through that pain. We just want and almost expect that our lives should be pain-free. And yet that doesn't register with what the Bible says when it says, Man is born to trouble as the sparks fly upwards. Or even Jesus when he said, In this world you will have trouble. So sorrow is not an accident occurring every now and then. It's the dark thread that weaves through the tapestry of our life. Whether we like it or not, we learn from the things that go wrong. Is that right? It's right. And yet there's another side. At the same time as his brother's being filled with envy, his father is filled with love. There's a bright side to a dark picture. And even though Potiphar's wife falsely accused him, he was showing signs of what success did within Potiphar's household. Even when he was in the prison, 
he did well in the prison. He was rising and, and they put in charge of the prison. So the outward circumstances of his life are recorded in the phrase where it says, and the Lord was with Joseph and he prospered. And that's a, a, a sign in the Old Testament of, of what godly people looked like. It said they lived quietly and they died well, surrounded by their children and grandchildren. It's almost a symbol of what Old Testament prosperity looked like. And so in this passage it says, And Joseph saw Ephraim, the children of the third generation, the children of Machir, son of Manasseh, were brought up on Joseph's knee. Long life, honoured old age, a quiet grave, are symbols of the Old Testament success story and given as evidence of his happiness. So, we put that in his eulogy, don't we? We say sorrow, yes, joy, yes, and that's, and that's life. Sorrow and joy running together. But what about the inside of Joseph's life? The real person behind the circumstances. So far, these are just the uh, sketching the out, outside. We'll leave that for another time, but think about this. Think about this. I have to understand that God is at work in all my sorrows as well as all my joys and he can be a constant companion in both of them because it's both of them that go to make me me and you you amen god bless